you'll start to understand why that rapid growth is. Um, in general, from a cloud perspective, I mean, cloud is certainly something that everybody's looking at and talking at the moment. How fast is it growing? Well, you can see it's up 18% this year, and they're expecting that growth to continue through to about 2016 at about 17% growth. So as much as the hype we are hearing, there is definite evidence that people are really starting to move and look at cloud. And I know some of you on the call today are certainly in that group. So what's the experience that we have here, guys? Well, I've just taken one segment, um, the Gippsland area, actually, where we, we do a fair bit of work. And I, I just wanted to put up a slide that really reflects the strength that TD's had in the cloud. A lot of that began, as you know, three or four years ago when we were the first organisation to work with VMware to produce a, an all of local council ELA, which allowed, as a, as a council group, to enjoy some of the savings and innovation that, that we drove with VMware there. Since then, we've certainly done a lot of work around the DR. David Danner, some of the guys that you'd be familiar with, ran a all-council BIA, uh, where we started to look at, you know, from a business continuity and DR perspective, what the governments were doing and how we could help ensure that those processes were in place across a lot of the councils. And he continues to work with many of them today doing that. The other big things that you'll see on there, you know, South Gippsland, you know, infrastructure virtualization, just like La Trobe, Wellington, and many of the other councils as well. So for people that might not be familiar with TD that are on the call, you know, it's just the evidence we, that we have done so much work with the council group over the years. So let's talk about traditional DR. Well, if we all go back five years ago, we all know how difficult it actually was. Physical to physical was a very difficult DR scenario. And in many cases, you know, most organisations didn't bother about it. It was too expensive to manage and maintain. You know, that secondary site sat there with idle assets. If you patched one, you had to patch the other. If you did happen to fail over, you've got to get your backup tapes, make sure you've got like for like hardware, BIOS is correct, firmware is correct. And not only was it difficult in a VR situation, but you know, it was still almost impossible to test these solutions. So organisations really weren't sure if they were getting you know, any benefit out of the investment they were making in DR. Now we all know the virtual revolution came along and this made disaster recovery a lot more simple and a lot more palatable in a way people could start to introduce it. How did it work? Well, with virtualization, we started to run, as we know, VMDK files on shared storage on the SAN. So we used to start to do some kind of storage replication, maybe a tool like Recover Point, and we'd use that to move the virtual machines. And then over the top of that, we would run tools like Site Recovery Manager, and this provided the orchestration. Now, some of the great benefits for this was, of course, that reduced hardware costs and some of the cost savings we were realising from moving to virtual environments started to pay for those DR environments. The known more need for like for like x86 servers, which was great. You know, you could start to use even some of your old hardware in a DR site to realise some of the cost savings as well. And the idea around automated run books provided us this concept that you didn't have to always then have these paper-driven manuals when you went into DR. You could group applications, and this of course meant it was a lot easier to test these environments. You could bring up your VMs in a bubble environment, check they're OK, and bring them back down. That was a great leap forward from physical DR, but over time, it started to create its own challenges. And one of the, the big ones there, guys, is idle cost. And some of you I know have also, on the call today, have secondary sites where you deployed a replica of your production environment. And over the last two or three years, you know, that's sat there quite idle. Um, and it's a big expense that customers have sitting on the books as a just in case something goes wrong in DR. And we'll talk about how we address some of those challenges with DR as a service. Management and maintenance, you know, you patch one side, you patch the other, you upgrade your vCenter to 4.5, 5.1, whatever it might be, and you've got to patch the other one as well. The other thing is that secondary side is always powered on, so the cost to cool that environment of course, the power there as well, you know, is another cost to the business. Scale, we all know growth of data is sitting at about 40% year on year. So that means if you need to upgrade your production SAM, you have to upgrade the secondary SAM as well. So scale becomes more difficult. 
And of course, every three years, CapEx. Every three years you need to replace that when you replace your production as well. And probably the one that we're seeing drive a lot more people towards the DR as a service solution is that concept of the IP sitting with a small team. So if you are to invoke DR and the people that have that IP are with you or may have left or whatever it might be, you're very reliant on them bringing up that environment. Whereas in the solution we'll talk about, you get to share that risk amongst you know, a large team of consultants. So what does a solution look like? How are we starting to solve some of those problems and issues with traditional DR or people without DR? It all starts with the Thomas Array Cloud Services. So the things we're going to talk about briefly today is touch on infrastructure as a service and disaster recovery as a service. Over the coming months, we're going to continue to run webinars, not only with informative sessions like this, but also with demonstrations of each one of these solutions. So you get to understand the look and feel of how your environment will start to run or parts of your environment will start to run in the cloud. So Let's talk about the actual building of the, of the DR as a service solution. It all starts with this concept of what we call a virtual data center. So our cloud we built best of breed with our partners, EMC Cisco, and of course it's now been certified by VMware as vCloud powered. But it's built on this concept of a virtual data center. So instead of building up single VMs here and there, we build you a virtual data center within our vCloud. Now that is your virtual data center to do with what you like. In this concept we're talking about today, it becomes the target for the replication of your VMs for disaster recovery. The other great thing about this solution, it's controlled pricing at a fixed cost. So, you know, even if you want to grow that environment, it's not something that's going to scale up out of control without you being aware of it. You get access to the best practice deployments from a service catalog. Now what I mean by that is within that environment we have deployed templates for SQL, for maybe Exchange 2013, for all your traditional OSs such as Linux, your OSs from Microsoft. So within that environment you have access to start to run a test and development out environment within this virtual data center as well. So we'll probably, as I said, run a session in September and go into more detail on this, but let's focus down now on the actual disaster recovery solution itself. So when we went to market looking for a solution as a cloud provider, the most important thing for us is we had to remain agnostic. Now we know out there within the council, many of the environments are different. Some run HDS, some run EMC, maybe some NetApp and there's definitely some Dell out there as well. So as a service provider, we need to make sure you are able to replicate into our environment from yours without having to make any changes to our cloud. So the way we do do this is through what we call hypervisor-based replication. So instead of replicating out at the storage level, we do small block level changes that get fed out to the vSphere API and replicated across into the vCloud. So this means we are highly scalable because there's no physical hardware involved. We install a small um, virtual replication appliance that sits on each, each ESX host, which means it's very, very easy for us to scale. You add a new host, we just put a virtual machine on there. Because we're replicating small block level changes, it means the RPOs that we start to talk about are really seconds. So this becomes critical because that RPO within organisations has changed even from three years ago when you deployed maybe your existing DR solution. Organisations can't afford to lose days or multiple days of data anymore. So these solutions can really pull that RPO down quite quickly. Now another thing is within the world of disaster recovery, it's not always a flood or a fire that causes a disaster. In many cases, in fact more often than not, it can be human error or corruption that's hit the production site. Now within this solution, the corruption may hit and get replicated across to DR, but we have the ability to journal back point in time, find when that um, corruption may have hit, bring it back up, test it within the cloud, and then roll it back into production once you're comfortable that that application is back into a state that, that you need it to be. And of course, the, the big thick pipes that used to be required for disaster recovery are no longer 
we still need some good bandwidth, but certainly not the size we used to talk about. Because we're compressing this and then throttling just small pieces, I guess, at the, at the bit level, um, it means we don't have to rely on the, on the big bandwidth that we used to. So we all know at an application level, not many apps these days, especially ERPs and that, are single VMs. Most of them are, are multi-level, multi-tiered applications. They'll have some sort of web front end. They'll have an application server, maybe one or two, and then of course database servers. So in many cases with traditional DR, even though you've replicated those VMs across, you still you know, will have struggle when you bring them up to make sure that application consistency within that environment is correct. With this solution, we actually group the applications into one, what we call a protection group. So let's take a, I'll, I'll use SAP for an example. I know some of the customers on run SAP. We group that web layer, we group the application layer and the database layer and replicate that as one protection group. So what that means, when you bring that up over in production, those applications and the data between them has remained consistent. Even within your production, it might be moving around with storage vMotion or traditional vMotion. Our solution will track that and keep that application group when it replicates it across. The other big advantage is it means when you start to test this environment, you can test it per application. It also means as well, because of the way we scale this, we can protect maybe just one or two applications for you. As you start to move into the DR solution, you might say, well, listen, I don't want to DR my entire environment, I just want to DR one or two applications. Because of the way the solution works, we're able to do this. All right, so let's talk about failover and failback because there's many DR solutions that we've seen which are fantastic to fail over, but failing back has always been difficult. This one's 100% virtual aware. So as I said, as it moves around vMotion, moves around virtual disk, virtual networks, our solution will continue to track where those VMs are. We obviously replicate them across and then in the event of a disaster, we do apply more capacity to those environments as required and start to bring up those VMs. So the RTO is just minutes, guys, and, and people that have used Site Recovery Manager as well will understand how quickly you can get those environments up and going. So we recently did a test with a customer for a, an audit. It was actually an audit with PwC. We restored their entire environment well and truly up and had users in there within an hour. And that was quite a complex environment that involved SharePoint, talking into Exchange, talking into Microsoft Dynamics as well. So the other thing is when you run these tests, you can run any test that you want from a single application to the entire environment up on a bubbled environment within the vCloud. So what this means is you know, for auditing purposes for your business, you're able to run up, do the test, print out the audit reports. There's many levels of auditing reports within the environment that you can then hand back to the business and say, yes, in the event of disaster, we've got the tick. And then off-site cloning. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier around testing and development. Because you've got capacity in the cloud now, you can actually snap clones off this environment and bring them up in the cloud to start doing test and development. If you want to start to do some patching on your applications or you want to start upgrading versions of those applications, you can quite easily do that in the cloud, once again, off on an isolated network. So one of the other big benefits that we talk about now with DR as a service is really how quickly it can be implemented once those projects begin. The assessments can be done. The design and build only takes a few days now. We see the data and I'll say, voila, you've got DR in the cloud. The reason for this, guys, is because we've already made that big investment in building the infrastructure within our data center. So for DR now, you don't need to go through the process of designing and building a secondary data center, you know, getting your storage in and your computing and building that environment. We've already been through that. So in many cases, it's a small configuration on your site once the assessment's been made, the seeding of the data, and then just the configuration of the environment. So, you know, for a sample 30 DM site, we sort of talk about sub 10 day projects now, which is quite astounding when you compare the size of the traditional, VM, the traditional disaster recovery projects that we know that we've been through with, with many of the councils. 
So the sort of services that we do now or deliver the DR services, the abridged BIA is something that we still see as critical um, before people move into a, a DR project. We come in, we really understand the RPO and the RTOs of the environments. We talk to the business about the critical applications that they want to start to bring up in those environments and start to determine the application restart order. And some of you have been through those workshops with Dave and understand how critical they can be to ensuring a successful disaster recovery solution. The other one that we have is obviously a DR assessment. It doesn't go into the detail of an abridged BIA, but either way we still need to run the assessment just really to understand what type of applications you're running in your environment, the size of those applications, the change rates. The change rates is critical because it helps work out the bandwidth that's required between your site and our cloud. And then, of course, you know, it gives us a high-level design and costs with the recommendations of what's required. So these are things, guys, that we can certainly run for you um, at the moment you know, when required. So I guess we've spoken about the solution and, and gone into some detail on it, but let's, let's really spend some time now talking about the benefits of the DR solutions. To me, really what it comes down to in such a big way it's all about risk reduction. So I spoke earlier about the IP of your DR environment sitting with maybe one or two people. That is a risk to the business and the main reason being is if that person's not available and disaster recovery has to be invoked, you know, who in the business is going to do it? With these solutions, how it works, which is fantastic, you've got a 24 by 7 support number to call. So that risk doesn't all set with you. You get to share that risk with you know, Thomas DeRay as a business. You call our service desk and you know you've got a hundred consultants, so to speak, on the end of that phone that's going to help bring that up. So there's no single point of responsibility around disaster recovery. As part of the project and as part of those 10 days of services, that includes a plan and that is a 10-step plan that's going to take you from point of declaring a disaster through to having your environment up and running in the desired RTO. So the other great thing is the continuous monitoring and reporting on the environment. We all know many of the DR sites after they go past that initial build, sometimes you know, are left to, you know, they fall out of sync with the production site, people aren't sure if they're working. With these solutions it's continually monitored and reported upon and of course we also push you to do regular testing. The reason we do that is for our own peace of mind. You know, we want to make sure that that investment that you're making is comfortable so we build those regular tests into your, um, into your proposals and statements of work as well. The other thing is the minimal capex. You know, at the moment if you want to build a new DR site or secondary site, it's a big upfront investment. These ones you get into a small amount of capex for the services and of course the investment in the build of the environment's already been made by TD. The other one is the no idle cost. There's no secondary site sitting at the depot, there's no secondary site sitting down at the library wherever it might be, at an idle cost. How this solution works is the, the compute that you pay for is a very small pilot light that keeps the replication going. If you are to invoke DR, we then start to scale the environment. So if you need 256 gig of RAM to run your environment in a DR scenario, there's no point paying for that when you're not in DR. You pay for the small pilot light and then as that environment starts to grow, in the event of DR, we apply more resources as required so we can scale that out on demand. I spoke about it earlier, but you know, one of the great things is having Dave Danner and the DR team build you an automated run book for this. So that's all built into the solution and helps you to test whenever you need to. And last but not least is this concept of future-proofing <laughs> future your environment. Next time you come to refresh your production, you don't need to go ahead and refresh your DR. Even if you move from maybe NetApp storage to EMC or HDS to Dell, it doesn't matter to us. Once again, because we're replicating out that hypervisor level, you can just continue to upgrade or make changes to that production environment. And as long as you're running some kind of VMware vCenter, we don't mind. We can just continue to replicate out of that environment. So we've been through a bit, but let's quickly run through the checklist for DR, and this is something that we work with you on to make sure you are going down the right path. You know, is it virtual ready? You know, everybody's moving to 100% virtual, so your solution should be based on that now. 
is it vendor agnostic? As I said, if you're HDS or a Dell shop, an IBM shop or EMC shop, it shouldn't matter for your DR. You want something that can just continue to replicate that's just a service level to you. Now, is it application aware? We spoke about that with SAP as the example. You know, what's the point of just replicating your VMs across if you, when you go to bring them up, you know, it's very difficult to sort of guarantee that data consistency. You know, does it scale? You know, with a, a cloud environment, the more you move into production, the more you can quickly add to that cloud environment. You don't have to go and order more trays of disk for your DR that's going to sit there and have that idle cost. You know, is it easy to to manage this, this solution is fully integrated into your vCenter. You can add or subtract VMs as simply as a click of a button. You can test this environment at a click of a button as well. So it's very easy to perform testing as you need. And you'll get to actually see this, guys. I'll bring it up on the slide a bit later on. But you know, on the MAV stand next week, I really encourage you to come along and see us and see just how simple it is to manage this solution. And then number 10, last but not least, guys, who carries the risk if you need to invoke DR? You know, it's important that you can share that risk with a service provider and team of consultants. It's going to help bring that environment up in the event of DR. If you're not there or your team's maybe away or camping and can't be reached, who's going to bring up that DR environment for you? So to be able to share that risk 24 by 7 you know, is something that you certainly should be looking for in your solutions. So let's talk now really about what we'll be showing you uh, next week at the MAB event as well. And it's just the Council Cloud. So obviously with all the experience that we've had um, within the councils and with the VMware ELAs, we wanted you guys to have the similar experience around cloud. So we're actually building a dedicated cloud platform. Or I should say we've actually built a dedicated cloud platform that we'll be showing you next week at the MAB event. Um, you know, the council requirements are different to both, but we like to treat you as, I guess, as a, as a large entity and allow you to leverage that buying power as a group, just like we have in the past across the VMware ELA. So we really encourage you to come along and have a look at this, and we can demonstrate that out for you next week. Okay, so what's the next steps? Well, I spoke about the MAV event. I hope many of you are coming along. We'll be on the stand there. So we can you know, start to show you some of these as solutions. For the people that can't make it, we'd love you to book a one-on-one -on -one time. We've met with you know, several of you, and some of you, as we know, are moving down the path with this solution, which is fantastic. Um, but if you haven't seen this and you want to see it, please book in a time for us to come and demonstrate in your office and talk through how it all works. The other thing that's available for you too, guys, is the evaluation of a cloud service. So, you know, for 30 days we can run up an environment and we can come out and even start to replicate the ends in there in your environment. So we really want you to start to understand how the benefits that you'll get out of this solution and just that, that pain and complexity it'll take away from your traditional DR. So we really encourage you to take us up on the, on the option of the evaluation. And it's quite simple, if you wanted to order that now, if you type yes in your question area, we can start to, um, you know, we can start to do that straight away. And of course, that's a zero dollar. There's no cost to that, guys. Um, we can spin it up for 30 days. You can go in, have a look at the service catalog, run up some virtual machines, see what you think. And the other great thing is, you know, we can connect you into your on-premise solution through a tool called vCloud Connector, and that's no cost at all either. So you'll start to you know, within a matter of seconds, so to speak, have your own hybrid cloud connecting from your on-premise into a, a VMware vCloud-powered offering. So on that, I'm not sure if there's any questions that have come through at all. Um, so I encourage you certainly to either get back in contact us through David, who will send out a recorded version of this, but really encourage you to come along and visit us next week at the stand um, you know, we've got all these offerings on display and we'd love to spend some time and take you through that. So on that note, thank you very much for your time and hopefully I look forward to seeing you all next week at the event.
If you're there guys, actually anyone that's still on there, we've just had a last minute question come through which is great and that's around data sovereignty. The answer to that is yes, both our clouds are Melbourne based or locally based. One is based in Port Melbourne and then of course the secondary one for DR reasons for the city is based 25 kilometres away out in Mitcham. So both actually Victorian based clouds which I know for legislation reasons is certainly important to the councils. And I think that's it guys, no more late questions. Well thank you again and any other questions you have please feel free to send through. Thank you again for your time and we'll see you again soon.